Well, <clears throat> for the first time, I've been trying out using static grass, something I haven't used before. So all I've done is done a small area with the puffer bottle. I do have one of the tea strainer type uh, grass applicators, but uh, at the moment I thought I'd stick with the puffer bottle. And the area I've done is being demonstrated today by this Hornby LMS pug, uh, which is pulling <laughs> a weathered dapple uh, amalgamated roadstone truck. I've got unweathered, but unfortunately they keep derailing. Whether it's because the uh, that was a bit quick, the um, weathered ones are slightly heavier with the extra paint. Perhaps that keeps them on the track. I'm running this with the um, HM6000, so it'll probably uh, stop in all the wrong places. But there we go. The first part I did, as the door slams in the wind, was um, I ballasted this track here with a mixture of buff and grey medium grand, uh, ballast. Um, I'm not sure whether I like it or not, but I'm going to stick with it on the main, this is the main line basically, or will be, later in the uh, proceedings. And then that left me this corner, there's always a corner. So I thought I'd put a small barn type agricultural building in there. I think that comes from, Ooh, who made that? I've got a feeling that's a ratio model. It might be a wills though. And um, the track obviously is just brown paint at the moment, still wet. And I've tried out autumn static grass, which I'm quite pleased with. Obviously it needs a lot more attention, Ugh, trees, other stuff but uh, I quite like the effect the wall is not finished and on the to hide the um, gap underneath the track if you like I've been using these homemade brick piers or, or sides um, which I fitted and then put wooden partitions in places here and there the problem is I've got the grey supports behind those and um, it's all a bit tight, but I, I think it, well, I think it, by the time it's all finished, I think I'll probably get away with it. I'm not looking for the most realistic, perfect railway in the history of model railways. I'm quite happy with what I've done so far. Um, and we'll just have to see how it goes, I think. But um, there we are. That's what it looks like at the moment. I haven't done much else. I'm making some curved rails to go around the outside of this section here. Uh, I've got uh, some adhesive fixed cardboard, if you like, heavy cardboard underneath the track. And then I've got more piers coming, uh, though these, none of these are fixed permanently and that's just a temporary cardboard thing until more of these piers. I quite like these piers. Um, a lot of people don't, but um, I quite like them. Um, they're also used to support the girder bridge that uh, most people would probably recognise. It's made from numerous airfix kits, as is the section there. Made from, I think that was made from two kits, and this one is made from three. <laughs> and the funny thing I found is, the older the kit, the better the quality. It's obviously to do with the Machines are now leaking, I think there's a lot of flash on them, etc. and stuff. Oh, it pulls away nicely when you do it like that. That's with the uh, HM6000. So I've got these... Um, <laughs> other way. I've got the uh, curved sections and I'm slowly fixing the wood rails, which will be uh, to look like steel. Uh, I'm fixing them to card formers and using pins and glue and stuff as an experiment. Excuse the speaker, it's a bit bright, but there we go. So that's about it for today. See you next time.